My name is Sarah. Welcome to the It is a Sarah podcast. Today it is Monday, April 8, 2024, and this is episode number 135. I'm coming to you from the Netherlands, so excuse my Dutch English. I love to knit, I love to crochet, and I love to talk. So that's the perfect combination for making this podcast. I make my episodes in Dutch and in English, so be sure you pick the right one. Okay. Today I want to share my handwerk perikelen, my crafty adventures from this week with you. And I had quite some hard jumping moments, <laughs> so there's a lot to share. I finished three projects and of course this is the most eye-catchy one, so let's start with this one. Also because it might be a little bit too warm to wear it all episode because um, the weather in the Netherlands, or actually the temperature in the Netherlands, is quite high um, during the weekend and also today. Although it is getting grey at the moment, it was sunny this morning, um, but we had temperatures uh, over 20 degrees this weekend, so it was really, um, really a summer vibe weekend with uh, bare legs in the garden. <laughs> My legs are quite white, so <laughs> they could use some sunshine. Um, and uh, it's not actually weather for a warm woolly layer, but when you finish a warm woolly layer, you will wear that warm woolly layer. <laughs> and actually in the mornings and in the evenings, it's still quite cold, so then it's really nice. I do wear uh, cardigans all year round, uh, especially... I don't wear coats quite often, uh, only when it's raining very hard or when it's really, really, really cold, but I prefer to wear a cardigan instead of a coat or a jacket, so this is perfect for now. So let's dive into it. This is the Ultra Worsted Cardigan, a pattern by Skeinder Knits. And this pattern was in my Ravelry library for years. I think I bought it um, with a discount code. I can remember I bought several patterns of Ellie um, at the same time. So I'm quite sure I used the discount code. Um, knitting designers um, quite often um, uh, do a discount code when they are celebrating their birthday or there is another thing to celebrate, um, so that's really kind of them. Um, and the reason I put this, uh, I added this to my library was because um, it is a worsted weight cardigan, uh, all over color work. Uh, I love the pictures of Ellie in it. I love the shape. It was uh, quite fitted, um, but also because it was all over, it was quite a busy color work, but also easy and good for the worsted weight yarn so i could knit it in let lopi i had quite of i had i have quite some let lopi yarn in my stash and that's a worsted weight yarn so that's the main reason why i bought the pattern only the knitting of the cardigan never happened <laughs> until now and it's not let lopi <laughs> Uh, let me start with saying that the Otra uh, pattern, um, there are more Otra patterns uh, from Skeinder Knits. I am quite sure, I, I didn't check, but I'm quite sure there's also an Otra pullover. And there are also Otras in worsted weight, no, no, in fingering weight uh, yarn. And maybe there's more, I don't know. Um, I think um this pattern in worsted weight makes it a good beginner friendly pattern because uh, the color work charts are quite easy and repetitive and um the worsted weight uh, is it's a bit of a thicker yarn so you uh, can finish your project sooner and it's always nice to uh, have a successful uh knitting project uh, when you just start with uh, uh, knitting color work or knitting in general when you uh, will knit a fingering weight project um, it's more time consuming and when you are a beginner knitter most of the time you don't knit very quick oh i didn't i i still i i can knit quick but not super quick i just knit a lot <laughs> so that's why i uh, can make a lot of things, but especially when you just start knitting and it's not going very fast, uh, it's nice to pick a project with some thicker yarn. Okay, um, so, but let's start with the yarn, because it isn't Let Lopi, what is it then? 
At the end of last summer, I think it was September, on a knitting event, I met Antonita. Antonita is a Dutch lady, but she also has Spanish roots. And she lived in Portugal for quite some years. Uh, she moved back to the Netherlands. And um, a few years ago, she discovered knitting uh, when she lived in Portugal. And she also discovered the lovely Portuguese, Portuguese and Spanish yarns. And oh, she really felt in love. So when she, uh, she, she was knitting and knitting and knitting, I think we all know once you discover knitting and it clicks, <laughs> you do don't stop knitting. Um, it will become become your biggest love. No, not your biggest love. <laughs> um, it's not my biggest love. I love my husband and children more. Okay, okay. <laughs> but um, when she moved back to the Netherlands, she thought, oh, I really um, uh, want uh, uh, to make it possible that Dutch people and Belgian people, and I think she ships to other countries too, but that a that lot of more people uh, can work with those lovely yarns from the south, southern lands of Europe. Uh, Portugal and Spain. <laughs> no. <laughs> in Dutch we say Portugal and Spanje. In English it is Portugal and Spain. I'm sorry. I will struggle over it again and again. So she started an online yarn shop which is called Wool uit het Zuiden, which means wool, wool from the south. And then uh, it's meant as wool from the south of Europe. Uh, I met her uh, at a knitting event and she asked me if she could send me some sample yarns so I could try and uh, she did and I received and they were all lovely yarns and um, on my knitting list was the Otra Worsted Cardigan with Let Lopey. So I was thinking maybe I can knit it with, uh, I can uh, start a collaboration with Antonita so I can knit it in her yarn so I can um, uh, discover the, the, the southern European yarns and uh, I can advertise a little bit for her uh, new shop. So we did and I choose this yarn. It is called Delana Rustica and it's a Spanish non-superwash merino yarn. It is woolen spun, one ply and it's a, a, a 100 gram ball, yarn ball, with almost 200 meters of yarn, if I am correct, 193. It is available in a lot of different colorways and Antonita organized them on her website in um, uh, color groups. There was a very bright group, there was a dark group, maybe something different, pastel, I guess. But there were also, was also a natural group with undyed colors. Uh, and I uh, chose two of those colors, the brown and the undyed white, the off-white. And um, she sent them to me and I started to swatch. So I did. And while I was swatching, it was, uh, it was a beautiful contrast and it was looking very good. But there was a little voice inside me uh, telling me that I must pick black instead of white. And I thought, no, I want the off-white because I already ordered it and um, uh, I love it. I love the look of it. <laughs> the little voice inside me, I think it was my heart speaking, didn't shut up. <laughs> it only screamed louder and louder. So I thought, okay, okay, let's try with another yarn from Stash. I didn't have Dlana Rustica in my um a yarn stash in black, but I had another yarn. It was actually a DK weight. It was pear gint. Uh, so I tried so I could see how the color combination would work out. And um, as you can see, the contrast between the black and the brown is uh, low, much lower than with the, the brown and the white. I knew it must be that color combination. So I ordered two extra yarn balls, the black ones, and that's not an undyed, it's a black dyed uh, Delana Rustica. Uh, and I started knitting. I was a bit doubting about the color combination while I was knitting because I think the color work was meant to be as this. Um, and, and you can also make a high contrast color work with a dark main color, no, sorry, with a light main color and a dark contrast color. But this is a very low contrast. But there was something in me really um, telling me that it must be the low contrast and um, now it's finished while I was knitting I was doubting every now and then because you couldn't see the color work as good as with this color combination but now it's finished I'm really really happy with the result because 
Um, I think this is absolutely uh, a lovely piece I can add to my wardrobe. Um, and uh, especially because of the low contrast, um, it is suitable with a lot of things. I will wear this as a jacket quite often. Um, and it's, it's more a bit of a neutral garment with uh, the low contrast than it would be when I use this color uh, combination. It's also lovely and I absolutely can recommend this, but it was, it was good that I followed my heart. It was an interesting process, but it was, uh, yeah, I, I'm very happy I did. I love dark colors. I always feel very powerful in dark colors, very strong. <laughs> so that's okay. I don't know yet if I really can recommend the Lana Rustica. It was a lovely yarn to work with. It's a wooden spun yarn. It was really, it knitted up quite nicely. No, it, not immediately. It was actually, when I, when I knitted it, the fabric was quite wobbly wobbly. And I was a bit worried how it would block out, but I did knew that my um, swatch blocked out really nice. So um, the fabric uh, straightened up quite and, and the stitches, yeah, they became one piece of fabric and not only single stitches and it was really looking good. Um, but I did went down one needle size because I didn't get gauge with this swatch and I was really worried my cardigan would be way too big. So I knitted my swatch with a five millimeter needle and the cardigan I knitted with a 4.5 millimeter needle without swatching, knitting on the edge. That's how I am. <laughs> I have such an exciting life. <laughs> um, but while I was knitting, it was, looking wobbly bobbly and I was a bit worried oh will that look out just as good as when uh, I knitted on a, a little bit of a loser gauge um, so I filmed a little bit just before blocking last Saturday night uh, so let's go to that moment hello it is Saturday it is end of the afternoon begin of the evening uh, it is uh, 6.30, so a little bit in between. And I'm actually visiting a birthday party uh, from uh, at our neighbors. Maybe you can hear the noise at the background. It's very nice weather, so uh, we are celebrating it in the garden. And it's very nice and cozy, but I uh, sneaked uh, away because um, it was my plan to finish my knitting before we went to that birthday party, but I didn't make it. Um, so I brought my knitting with me and I finished it there. And now I really want to block it because when I block it now, normally I block it over the night, during the night. Um, but I really want to finish it tomorrow so I can show it in my Monday episode. Um, so I will block it a few hours and uh, just before I go to bed, I will spin cycle it and let it dry. Um, so tomorrow it will be dry and I can add the zipper and then it's a ta-da! moment on Monday. Uh, but what I want to show you, it was a little bit of a yarn chicken party, but I won. That was very nice. Um, I knitted the facings, those weird little tiny um, things I knitted. Uh, they will be at the inside of my cardigan, uh, covering the stick and uh, the zipper. Uh, so I did finish the second one just a few minutes ago but i really um, am looking forward to blocking this garment because i am so curious how the uh, fabric will block because uh, it is looking a little bit wonky and um, that's a big difference with my swatch my swatch is really that is blocked it is downstairs so um, i can't show it you now but um that is really uh blocked out very good it's nice and even uh, the stitches are nice and even and it's looking much better than this so i'm very curious if there will be a blocking miracle um so that's why i wanted to show you uh, the garment before blocking uh, it's the, very nice the fabric is uh, feeling very nice but it is absolutely a magnet for all the uh, little bits and bobs of everything all the things are um, uh, attached to the yarn <laughs> so i don't know how that will work out when the garment is finished but we will see but i will block it right now okay just before i went to bed saturday night i spin cycled the garment and i uh, i uh, lay it um, on the blocking mat so it could dry flat and sunday morning when it was light again i could see that the fabric um, did straight up it did block out very good 
Um, it is a bit tighter than my swatch, but it is really the stitches are nice and even, and uh, yeah, it's really uh, it's really looking nice. I'm not really sure about the yarn. Uh, there's a specific thing um, which I don't know if I love it or not. Uh, there is actually a lot happening in the yarn. It's rustic uh, yarn, a non-superwash merino. It's very sustainable. There are many pieces of small straw in it. And they are really attached to the yarn. And um, uh, I saw it when I was knitting, uh, but I didn't pick them out. All those speckles are little pieces of straw. And um, here you can see them. Or too much to pick them out every time, so I didn't. Um, and they are everywhere. And I have mixed feelings about it because a part of me really loves that. It is a sustainable yarn and I feel very connected with the sheep the yarn is from. It is if I have uh, had a good cuddle with them in their barn <laughs> and, and all the straw is uh, also attached to my cardigan. So um, I love that feeling. But there's also a part of me that thinks it is too messy and um, uh, which doesn't like it. So I'm not quite sure how the balance is. I'm also, I, I wonder if there will not stick a lot of other stuff um, on this uh, garment. My own hair, my dog's hair, some dust, whatever. I don't know. Um, it feels as if it will, but I'm wearing it since I finished it yesterday and it's not uh, more than other garments I made. So I'm not sure. And also I, I'm very curious how it will hold the yarn because it's a merino yarn and the softer the yarn, the, the more it can peel and I don't know how it will wear out. It feels very good. It feels like a rustic merino. It's not as soft as a, um, a superwash merino, but it is um, also not itchy to me. I can wear it on my bare skin. I have a, a short top under it, so I have bare arms and it's feeling really nice and good. And also in my neck, it's really nice. So it was working nice. It was blocking out nice. Um, also the yarn balls, uh, Antonita told me, I, I was surprised about the amount of yarn I need for my cardigan. Only five balls, three of the main color and two of the contrast color. And they are very affordable. Um, I think around seven euros. I didn't pay for it. It was gifted to me, but um, the cost of the yarn, so not the zipper and the pattern were, were less than 40 euros. And that's a, a very affordable, I guess, for a non super sustainable yarn, um, which was good for the sheep and the, the human who worked with it, who created it. So uh, uh, I love that very much too, but I'm not, I'm not really sure. Um, we we shall see. I'm I'm very curious how it will work out. So uh, yeah, but I do love the end result and it wears lovely. It is. Uh, I feel really good in it. Um, okay, the cardigan. I did some modifications because the original cardigan, as you uh, probably have seen uh, in the picture, doesn't have the color and the zipper. I knitted my husband uh, a cardigan a few months ago at the beginning of this year and um, with a color and a zipper and I really love the look of it. I always with color work sweaters, I don't like the round yoke. I, I think it looks very beautiful, but I don't like to wear it. It's always too much uh, fabric here. I, I like to have it open here. So I'm always struggling with the color work uh, uh, items because round jokes are uh, uh, quite often used. <laughs> so um, uh, I, I really love it in a cardigan more, so it can be open a little bit, but adding a zipper and a color to it, it really uh, gives me a good feeling. And also a lot of possibilities too now, because I love this. I can make uh, zippers only until here. I can also make color work sweaters or cardigans with with a plain color at the top and and color work at the bottom of, or even the round jokes i can do with a zipper so uh, i think my color work problem is solved right now and uh, i am really happy uh, uh, that i made it uh, this way i put my sarah sauce over it that was one of my greatest desire of 2024 put more sarah sauce sarah sauce on over your projects um so I did. Um, 
for the cardigan of my husband, I uh, used the instructions for the zipper sweater light. I also did some modifications, but the color I made that way, way and I used exact the same instructions for this one. Um, and that worked out pretty good. I casted on the amount of stitches I, uh, I needed for uh, my cardigan. I knitted size two. Um, and instead of just knitting the ribbing for the neckline, I knitted the color. The only thing I um, uh, wouldn't do again was I knitted exactly the same amount of centimeters for the color as I did for my husband's cardigan. Only I am not a tall man. I'm a small lady. So it is a little bit on the long side. It is okay. I love the feeling in my neck. And also when, when it's closed, it can be closed, but one or two centimeters shorter would be better. So next time I will do that. Um, when I finished the, uh, the color, uh, I just uh, knitted the cardigan as uh, the pattern described. I added some stick stitches and started knitting in the round. And um, when I split it for the sleeves, normally I uh, knit up my yarn ball and then I first finish the sleeves before I finish the body. But those are, uh, th those are such magic yarn balls. There's not coming uh, an end to it. So <laughs> I kept on knitting and I finished the body first. Um, yeah, I love the length of it. Um, it was uh, a project that I picked up every now and then. I wasn't working on it constantly, so it felt like a forever knitting work. Um, uh, but suddenly I finished, uh, I, I reached uh, the correct length, so that was very nice. Um, I did forget at the bottom, uh, I did forget a few rounds of uh, even uh, black stripes, so I had to frog a little bit. Um, but it was okay. Then I knitted the ribbing and I finished it with um, a sewn bind off. It's really my favorite bind off at the moment. It's really surprising because I I, I used to hate it. <laughs> now I love it. Um, yeah, that can happen. <laughs> I'm always curious, what do I hate more? <laughs> Um, and then when I finished that, I picked up the sleeves and, and knitting the sleeves really went quickly. I knitted a magic loop and you can see that because there's a line uh, on this side and here. Um, this is also the decrease line. I will say more about that in a minute. Um, but because of the magic loop and the colorway knitting, the color work knitting, there are ways um, uh, to make it um, more invisible. But I chose for the most relaxing way of knitting. I felt I don't uh, feel motivated to use any tricks or whatever, traveling loops or whatever. I just want to knit magic loop because I love that. And I know there will be a line, but it's okay to me. Uh, I uh, prefer the comfort of my magic loop knitting. Um, I also, it, it did, uh, I block it out also this way. So it's also the blocking line, the blocking fold. So maybe I will wear it out. I don't know. Um, there was an interesting de way of decreasing for the sleeves. I always uh, use, uh, yeah, that, that I, I think that's the go-to in most of the patterns I knit. Uh, when you um, do the decreases, you do a, a knit together at the beginning of the round and a slip slip knit at the end of the round. So um, you have two decrease points uh, running at your underarm, but Ellie used the central decrease stitch. So uh, there's only one point of decreasing and um, I never have done that, I guess. I can't remember, um, but it really makes uh, it nice and easy. I had to, do, um, to find out how it works best with the um, magic loop method but when i found out it was really nice and easy and also with the color work um yeah i liked it of course the color work um uh, pattern uh yeah it doesn't match anymore when you are decreasing but it's on your underarm and it's quite a busy color work pattern so it isn't visible really uh, but i love the way of decreasing so i will remember that um I reached the correct length for the sleeves before I did all my decreases. So in the first round of ribbing, I uh, decreased four stitches, um, the four I had left. And um, I love to uh, put my decreases in a purl stitch. I think they are less visible. And then I knitted quite long cuffs. I really love them 
to have over my hands, especially when it's cold and winter. This gives me a really cozy feeling when I'm walking outside or just yeah, do it this way. But most of the time I fold them back so my hands are free to do whatever I want to do. And I really love that I have uh, both opportunities. So this is my go-to for the sleeves. And uh, yeah, they are quite thick, but I love the look of this too. Okay, and then um, I um, uh, I sticked my uh, uh, body before I finished the second sleeve because I was really curious. I, I was uh, motivated to do the stick. It was quite a while I did stick. I filmed the sticking process uh, for my Heart Jumping Friday video. Um, uh, Heart Jumping Friday is a... Uh, paid membership of my YouTube channel for uh, four euros a month you get an extra video every Friday a heart jumping Friday video and they are really fun to make because I uh, every now and then I deep dive in my uh, knitting uh, process um, as I did with the stick now but it's also the place where you can ask me questions it's really fun and nice some questions are personal some are about knitting and crochet but there are also typical Dutch questions so I have a lot of uh, fun answering all those questions so if you have questions about uh, a knitting project or a crochet project I make you are more than welcome to become a member so I will answer your question in one of the videos uh, so also about the sticking it's not a sticking tutorial I'm not a tutorial maker and I think there are uh, a lot of tutorials available on YouTube uh, so that's not what uh, if you search for a tutorial you uh, it's not that's not what you will find there but it's just a cozy heart jumping mo moment every Friday and uh, I really enjoy it. So you will, can find the link down below in the show notes. Um, you are welcome there. So I sticked it and uh, I was a little bit worried about the finishing of the stick because I wasn't sure if it will if it would work out the way I uh, wanted. Um, because I love to uh, finish my sticks with um, a knitted facing. Of course, I know you can add a ribbon or uh, another piece of fabric to hide your stick. Uh, but I love to do that with the knitted fabric. It, it looks more, I don't know, matching or something. I didn't find ribbons which I really liked. So and maybe maybe at some point in my life I will adjust with the sewn bind off. I, I want to do the, ripped, uh, the ribbons all the time, uh, but not now. Um, but I was a bit worried because it is worsted yarn and you have so many layers in the facing because you have the front layer, the top layer, and then uh, the, the, the cutted stick stitches, which are folded inside, and then the zipper, and then the knitted fabric of the facing. So it's quite thick, but I must say uh, it, it worked out pretty good. So I'm very happy with how it, uh, how it uh, ended. And uh, yeah, it's looking really nice and it was fun to do. Um, adding the zipper, it was my second zipper ever in a knitting uh, knitted garment. And uh, um, yeah, it, it went a little bit better than the first time, but the zipper of my husband in my husband's cardigan was really bubbling more than I liked. And this one is still bubbling a bit, but it's already uh, less than his cardigan. For uh, that cardigan, I used a metal zipper and it's more heavy, so um, maybe too heavy. So this time I uh, chose a plastic zipper. I love the look of the metal and also the material, but the weight was maybe too much. So uh, I used a plastic brown zipper and um, it, it, it is less bubbling. It's still bubbling, but I think that's just my my uh, sewing in zipper skills, which uh, are, are growing. <laughs> so it will be better every, every time. And it was really, when I was doing this, I really felt I was learning something new. And, and a part of me uh, really uh, longed to just pick up stitches and knitting a button band because uh, I think it cost me uh, the same amount of time, um, but uh, I uh, I knew I know what I am doing then, and now it was trying and trying over again, and um, I, I pinned the zipper, and then I repinned it, and then the other. It was really important that uh, the pattern um, lined up well, and every time I replaced the pins, it it <laughs> oh oh, and then oh. 
and um, uh, I really uh, it was really a challenge to keep motivated so <laughs> but I uh, I ended up with a perfect lining so I'm very proud of that um, I did sew my zipper in by hand there's no way I would do it on the sewing machine now uh, in this part of my process because my skills are not good enough for that and the sewing machine I know you can sew slow with your sewing machine but every now and then it goes and, and it's attached very good and I think when I do it by hand I can remove the stitches more easily when I'm not um, uh, when I think the, 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 it's not looking good so I can re-sew it and yeah it worked out better and I love the process of hand sewing too it's really uh, relaxing so I must say it worked out pretty good uh, the bobbling is still there I first blocked my garment and then put the, sew the zipper in uh, maybe when I block it again and I will stretch it out maybe it will be a little bit better but I'm not sure it is okay for me it is really I am absolute a perfectionist but it it was really nice to uh, to have the experience that it was okay that I was learning and my perfectionist my Miss Perfect was really kind and she said okay we will do it perfect another time <laughs> you can learn you learn by doing so um, it isn't fun anymore when you try over and over again without getting the, the perfect result you want to have. So I tried over and over again and then I felt, okay, this is the maximum I can do right now. So do it right now and next time it will be a little bit better. And maybe at some point I can't do better than that is what I can do, but um, I'm learning. So that was really... It was really nice to have such a good collaboration with Miss Perfect. It isn't always <laughs> that way. Um, there is also uh, a thing happening at the bottom of my uh, zipper. Uh, as you can see, um, there is no zipper at this part. And um, uh, I, it was, I started at the bottom, but because I replaced and replaced again, and then I realized, oh, now, now I have a, a centimeter uh, left on the bottom, at the bottom, I think, oh, it was okay. But I didn't realize because the garment is quite fitted, it would open so much. I thought it, the zipper would be high. I, I thought it would be more like this, but it's really, eh, eh. <laughs> so... I decided that this point remind me that it's okay that you are learning and um, yeah it's it's just be kind and gentle and it doesn't have to be perfect this little part um, is telling me that uh, so every time I see that in the mirror um, ah, I feel okay it's good so that's really it's really nice progress um, and also, when I uh, the zip, I used a 60 centimeter zipper, and indeed my sweater is uh, my cardigan is 61 centimeters from color to bottom. So when I skip one centimeter at the color, uh, the problem at the bottom will be solved. So that's nice. Uh, that's nice too. Okay, let's see. Did I tell you everything? I guess. Um, my bust circumference is a little bit less. So I, I didn't um, check my gauge. Uh, my gauge at the swatch was way too big. And then I went, uh, I went down one needle size and I never checked my gauge. But now I think size 2 um, supposed to be 87 uh, centimeters and I have 84. But I think the fit is perfect. It's really what I like. I, I love a fitted garment, but there is uh, enough space. So I'm really happy with the result of the cardigan. Yeah. Um, so um, the only thing is the yarn. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think I love it, but I don't think it's my it's my favorite. It, it, it will... Um, uh, how it will hold will influence my uh, my feeling about the yarn. I definitely will use the other two skeins. I'm looking forward to that. It's feeling quite nice. It's always it's also quite nice that I am not overheated right now. When I was filming my Dutch podcast, uh, my Dutch episode, I really want to put my cardigan out when I finish talking about it. But now I feel I can still wear it. The sun is. The sun is gone, so that's a good thing. So, okay, um, lovely project, uh, absolutely hard jumping. I absolutely recommend the pattern 
um, yeah, I absolutely recommend the pattern. The only thing when you are a beginner knitter or you never have steaked, um, the sticking process isn't explained very detailed. Um, and uh, yeah, I think sticking is not as difficult as I thought before I did it. And I think a lot of people also think it will is very difficult or very exciting. It isn't. It's much easier than, um, than it seems. Um, but maybe you need some more background information when it's your first stick. And uh, so that's the only reason why... I doubt if it's a beginner friendly pattern, but color work wise, it's absolutely beginner friendly. So yeah, I, I think it would be lovely to make this cardigan with uh, scraps. One main color and all the different colors for the scraps, that, uh, that would be perfect too. So I can imagine because I love the fit, I love knitting it and I have a lot of let low be left. I can imagine I will make another one at some time. <laughs> yeah again with a zipper it was also not my last zippered cardigan i really i really love this how to how to wear this it's really uh, yeah it's really good and i have another zipper uh because um i ordered my zippers online every time i am in the shop here in town they don't have the right zippers uh in store and i don't think uh, ordering your zipper online is the best thing to do um, because I always order extra zippers so that uh, costs extra money um, and um, yeah it's hard to see the color and and also the thickness of the of the zipper um, so I have a zipper stash now too for my husband's cardigan and for my own cardigans uh, so uh, we will own more zippered cardigans <laughs> Um, okay, that was all. The Ultra Worsted Cardigan by Skeiner Knits Hard Jumping Project. I finished two other projects too. Um, both socks. Let's start with this one. Uh, this is a pair of scrappy DK weight socks. I knitted two sock tubes. And um, yeah, it's also, it was such a fun knitting work. Let me show you. Um, I decided to uh, create um, a gift box for my family and friends for the end of the year. Um, I have um, for several years now, uh, just one or two weeks before Christmas, I, um, I have that feeling, oh, wouldn't it be lovely if I can give um, all my loved ones uh, a hand knitted pair of socks or whatever especially socks for the cozy feeling we have holidays it is cold we cuddle up on the uh, on the couch and yeah just uh, socks or hats or um, mittens or whatever uh, but um, yeah I only think of it when our Christmas tree comes in the home and it's only one or maybe two weeks before Christmas so I never make it so this year I am a little bit more organized. I um, uh, started to fill a gift uh, box for, uh, with knits, with handmade knits. And I didn't really pick, I didn't really connect people to specific gifts, um, uh, but I just make gifts. And um, it, it depends on the amount of gifts uh, which are in the box, uh, who is getting what. <laughs> Because maybe it's only for my husband and children, maybe for their boyfriends and girlfriends too, maybe for uh, my my nieces and 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 nah, brother and sisters, whatever. I don't know. Um, I don't know. We uh, we shall see. But I um, decided to make sock tubes so I can uh, decide at last at the last moment for who the socks will be. And uh, those are quite small, so they will definitely be for uh, one of the girls. I can fit in myself too. Um, although I must confess, when I want these socks, um, four stitches extra would be uh, better. But I really love it. So I will decide uh, in November, in yeah, at the end of November, beginning of December, what will be for who, and I will add an afterthought heel at the right place. Um, and I will keep the yarn I used for the toes and the cuffs. I will keep it close to the sock tube. Um, so I um, am sure that I won't knit it up in another project uh, accidentally. The project page in my knitting book. 
with all the information. Uh, I did cast on 14 stitches with the Turkish cast on and then I increase every other row till I have 24 stitches, uh, 48 in total. And then I knitted five rounds um, in the same color. I don't want to change immediately in pattern or um, uh, to another color when I'm knitting socks. I love to be the toe a little bit deeper. Um, so when I knit with um, uh, just a fingering weight sock yarn, I always knit 10 rounds uh, in the same color without uh, any pattern or whatever. And now uh, I knitted five because this is a DK weight. I held my sock yarn double and I knitted um, stripes of five rounds quite i don't know if you could hear that but they're flying over there's a little airport not far from where we live and it's very very little but every now and then there's flying something over so i held two fingering weight yarns together and i knitted five rounds for every stripe uh, 30 stripes in total, so 100, 150 rounds. So they are quite big, slouchy socks. Um, and um, yeah, it was really fun. It's really nice to just play with the colors. And I really love doing that. So um, I want uh, a pair for myself too. Uh, DK weight socks, scrappy socks. So I can't wait to cast on another pair. I knitted with three millimeter needles, but I'm a loose knitter. So, um, and especially those socks, which will be weared, uh, which will be weared as, as house socks. Uh, I love to knit them on a tighter gauge. So they will be a little bit more stronger. I think they will last longer than when they are knitted looser and um, a, a bit of a stronger fabric. It is when you knit with a tight gauge. I finished another pair of socks yesterday. Those are for myself. Chocolate socks. These socks are knitted with uh, one skein of merino sock yarn dyed by a Dutch dyer, uh, which is called Atelier Sopa. The colorway is called chocolate and it was a birthday gift for my children uh, to me for in my burst, uh, on my birthday in 2022. And I was really uh, thinking of making a special pair of socks uh, for myself because I love uh, the, the, the idea that they gifted it to me, uh, but it never happened. And last year in November, I started uh, a pair of socks uh, based on the Drow socks out of the Line 52 Weeks of Socks Volume 2 book. Um, it was with a half a brioche stitch and I did knit on 2.25 millimeter needles because that's my go-to needle, but I wasn't really um, happy with the fit. They were quite loose. I knitted uh, one sock and I was uh, just a, a, a little bit uh, um, after the heel and they were too long and they were a bit too loose. And then I decided one of my Dutch knitting friends always, is he also is a loose knitter and she always knits her sock on two millimeter needles. So I thought maybe that would be better for me too. So I tried that. And also, um, I uh, was inspired, I was scrolling on the website from Petite Knit and then I um, found a pattern for a pair of socks. I think they are called the Mary Jane socks, but I'm not sure. They were very long legged socks. Um, one uh, uh, Knit one, purl one rip um, in an off-white color and I was really um, touched by the simplicity of the socks. It was really hard jumping to me. And then I realized I want such simple long legged socks too, um, but not in off white, but in chocolate brown. Uh, but my knit one pro one is always looking a bit messy. And in that time I was also knitting um, the Arctic light sweater for my youngest girl. There was quite some twisted rip involved. and. Somehow I um, thought that I didn't like the twisted rib. I did use it once uh, a few times, a few years ago, but I, I, I don't know why, but I thought I didn't like knitting it because I knit my pearls a little bit different. I knit my pearls actually twisted for a little bit of a neater look. And I thought that was um, not very nice uh, going together with the twisted rib stitch, but 
it doesn't make sense because uh, you knit the knit stitch in the back loop when you knit twisted rib stitch so there's nothing happening with the pearls and it knitted actually quite good so i thought okay let me knit the twisted rib instead of the uh, knit one pearl one and i am really happy with the look of that i don't know if you can see it because they are a bit slouchy but it really worked out good and they are quite nice i knitted up my uh i divided my yarn skein my 100 gram yarn skein into mini yarn cakes of 50 gram and then i just knitted um uh, until i had a little bit left i did count rounds for the foot but i didn't count rounds for the leg and i did um, I was doubting about the ribbing and I decided I did a little braiding thing. Um, it's really a nice line between the ribbing. Um, uh, a Dutch knitter sent me an Instagram reel once with this technique and it's... Um, uh, I don't know what it's called but you, uh, you knit two stitches and then you twist them. So um, the stitch which is uh, which you lit, knitted last, you put at front, and the other one you put it back on your other needle, and you knit it again. So it's very stretchy, and there uh, you create a horizontal um, line, and it really marks the difference between, in this case, the leg of the sock and the ribbing. And I chose to do the ribbing also in the twisted rib. So. It's just a little bit hardly invisible, uh, certainly when you wear it, uh, invisible line, but it is there. And um, I chose uh, again for a sewn bind off um, because uh, normally I do the extra stretchy bind off and um, it can be a little bit too stretchy. And this time, um, because I want to wear the slouchy socks around my ankles, I won't put them up. I can put them up. Uh, put them over my the widest part of my under leg but um, then it's quite tight and when it's over that it's okay again but I won't wear them as knee high knees I, I will wear them slouchy I definitely am a leg warmer lover but in this time of the year when it's too warm for leg lovers I always get a bit confused because it's so empty around my ankles and um, I love to wear my Birkenstocks, uh, my sandals and slippers with bare foot but especially in March and April there are quite some days when uh, it's too cold for bare, foot, bare feet so I wear panties, no panties is underwear isn't it? I wear tights, I wear tights and then it's okay but when it's too warm for tights during the day it's nice, I can have slouchy socks in the colder mornings and uh, evenings and barefoot during the day. <laughs> so, yeah, it is a thing, changing the seasons. Oh boy, <laughs> there's happening so much in my wardrobe life. And that's really hard for a routine lover as I am. <laughs> so, very happy with those socks. I won't block them because I think they already look nice and I just want to wear them. So I will put them on my feet this evening, I guess. Those were the finished objects for today. Uh, it was quite a good week. I really had a lot of uh, projects on my needles the last weeks. And it's really nice to clear my needles. I only have two projects. No, no, that's not true. I have a new cast on. I will tell you in a minute. Um, I have my Ariana sweater to be. Um, my main focus coming week will go to that one because I really want to finish it. As you can see, I have to weave in some ends. I finished the crochet part, so I have to weave in ends and only knit the borders at the sleeves, at the body and at the neckline. And then that thing will be finished. Um, it is knitted in Lopi Einband. That's the little sister of Let Lopi. And it's a very rustic Icelandic yarn. So I don't think I will wear it a lot now but i can put it immediately in my winter box uh, uh, with winter knit so i have a new garment when autumn uh, begins this year that's really nice i also i don't think you can see i also have my scrappy cur sweater uh, i didn't touch it for weeks now but i'm looking forward to finish that because i think that will be a lovely spring garment too um, I, it will be long sleeved and it's knitted on quite a loose gauge, um, holding, uh, holding fingering weight yarn double. It's really a good uh, scrap eater. And then I have one cast on, 
how could I not? A rabbit! <laughs> After my rabbit happiness last week, um, I really want to have some rabbits uh, my own and I decided to knit my children as, as rabbits. I have two girls and one boy and I want to make them a rabbit and they, there's a fly, a little fly, go away, it's that season again. Um, they are teenagers, so they um, uh, it's not really that they want, although my girls, they really want a rabbit. My son, he's 19, he said a rabbit, a rabbit, but I think he will like it. Uh, but my girls picked colors and uh, they both want a beige one. So I started one beige one. My son didn't care which color, so I think I will pick a lighter brown. My husband also wants a rabbit, so maybe I will make us all in rabbits, but I start with the kids. I um, will make them in pairs of three. Can you say that? A pair of three? In couples of three? Uh, so I will. I have knitted one head and uh, two ears and I will knit the other two heads and the other four ears and then I will fill them. I made my note page. As you can see, I have made lists. Those are all the rounds you have to knit, uh, all the rows you have to knit. And I've made lists for three ears, uh, three heads and for six ears. So um, uh, I will finish all the heads first and then all the bodies. And uh, yeah, I hope it will work out, but it will be a slow process. I decided that at Wednesday afternoon, I will have a rabbit hour <laughs> because um, uh, my husband's cooking on Wednesday, so I have the hour before dinner and it really feels like uh, a gift to myself, some some spe special knitting time, uh, rabbit knitting time, so it will grow very slowly, but maybe I can also do a rabbit week again, that was really fun, but for now it's okay to just knit on it, only on Wednesdays and maybe some other days, but... There's so much fun to knit. I'm also uh, participating at the test knit of Rebecca from the Crayabea from the Senna cardigan, but I still didn't start. I have a little bit doubts about my yarn. I have some yarn in my stash, but I will visit a knitting event this Thursday. So I, I will not start before Thursday because maybe I will pick a really summer yarn, something with linen or cotton. I'm not sure. I don't know if I will find it at the knitting event, but um, we shall see. So I will visit the knitting event with a knitting friend this, uh, this uh, Thursday. It's not a re really big event. It's quite close to my house. I no, no, it's not in the city where I live, but uh, it's only 15 minutes with a train to the next city, so that's quite close. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. It's a, a really a nice and cozy place. It's called The Knit and Knot in Tilburg. And um, yeah, it's, it's fun to uh, visit all the beautiful people creating beautiful things. And I think there will also be uh, a lot of nice and lovely other knitters uh, to connect with. So um, I'm very looking forward to that. I will try the, the past uh, events. I ex uh, Every time I didn't want to film because um, yeah, I just didn't want. But now I feel motivated to film a bit. So I don't know if where to share it on YouTube or on Instagram. I don't know. But I, I have the intention to share the day with you. <laughs> so we shall see what will happen. Okay, last part. It's not a knitting or crochet part. It is uh, a cleaning part. As you might have seen and maybe have heard in one of my earlier episodes is that I added cleaning videos to this channel. Um, it's really a way to motivate myself to, to clean the house. Um, uh, and uh, I really have fun. I really love to read that so many of you love to see those videos and that your cleaning fire uh, burns harder <laughs> when you have watched such a video. So that's really nice. My cleaning fire definitely uh, burns harder when I create a video. So that's the main reason why I make those videos. Uh, they are motivating me and a part of me thinks that's really silly, but I also know that it um, doesn't make sense to overthink that. Just do it and have fun. Don't think too much because thinking too much doesn't make you happy. <laughs> so a cleaning does. That's a little bit I want to share. My videos are called Huiskamerflight. 
there's no talking in it so i don't make english and dutch versions there's just one version sarah cleaning i don't talk when i clean uh huiskamervleid um is not really a dutch word i played a bit with words words i know um if i remember correctly that there is a word huisvleid which you can translate as diligence 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 I don't know. I really had some interesting cleaning insights last week. Um, when you are knitting, um, we can speak uh, about process knitting and product knitting. And it also goes uh, on crochet, of course. Um, but um, uh, when you prefer the end product of your knitting, you are a product knitter. And when you enjoy the process of knitting more, you are a process knitter. And you can um, you can be in, be in between. You can be a process knitter for one uh, work and um, a product knitter for another work. And all is possible. But um, when I have to choose, I am most of the time a product knitter. I really do love the process, but my main focus is on the end result. I knit because I want that sweater or I want that blanket or I want that car cardigan. Um, and I am enjoying the process, but the end product is my greatest motivation. Um, and there are also projects in which the process is my uh, most enjoyable thing, uh, my granny striped blanket, for example. I really am enjoying the process. I don't have any hurry with that project. It can be a slow progress. I'm just uh, enjoying the process of crocheting granny stripes. So that's really interesting. And last week I was cleaning our hallway, as if you might have seen, and suddenly I realized that it works the same with cleaning. You can be a product cleaner or you can be a process cleaner. And I definitely am a pro product cleaner. I enjoy, I'm, I don't really enjoy the process of cleaning, but I do enjoy the end result of cleaning. That's also the reason um, I prefer knitting much more than cleaning. So when I can choose, I will knit instead of cleaning, but I do know that I enjoy my knitting more when my house is organized and clean. So that's why I um, uh, really have good daily routines. Um, I Every day I do a little bit of vacuum, vacuuming. That's a hard word. In Dutch we call it stofzuigen. Uh, vacuuming, vacuuming, hoovering is also a word, isn't it? <laughs> no, that thing. Um, I do a declutter round. I clean the toilet, I uh, change uh, the garbage bag, what do I more, there's something more, oh the laundry, one laundry a day, so those things I do every morning and uh, when I have done that it's okay, the house is looking good and it's okay and every weekend my husband and I we do some deep cleaning in the house, so the bathroom and um, dusting all and the, the, some, some extra things. Um, and that works pretty good. Our house is looking nice and um, organized and that's really nice. But the deep cleaning, that's a little bit less organized. When you open a kitchen cabinet hmm, <laughs> or when you put your finger on a higher level, hmm, and there might be some extra dust. And that's a process I can't get really into my routines. It, it really asks something extras and it doesn't work out. So I was really um, charmed by the fly lady system, which really you have your daily and your weekly routines. And every week there's another zone in your house um, which gets some extra attention. So the deep cleaning also happens within only 15 minutes a day. And I really love that idea. It's a bit of a crossed method. Uh, so you, you do your daily stuff and Every week, another part of your house gets some extra attention. And I did try it and it really worked out, but it didn't stick. <laughs> it, it doesn't happen anymore. So when someone uh, mentioned another cleaning method, another cleaning system in the comments, I was really interested. It was called the Tom system and I never heard of it. So I, I searched on YouTube and then I found a video which uh, um, uh, mentioned different cleaning methods and, and looked to all the pros and the cons. Um, 
and uh, it was also fly lady and the thumb system and the other i forgot so um then uh, the thumb is the organized mum it's a uk uh lady i don't know her name actually um i don't know anything but i did buy the app because i thought okay maybe it doesn't matter which system i use but i just use a system as a kind of guide um, which guides me through the cleaning process so I bought the app, uh, I think it was 7 euro and in the app uh, the difference between Fly Lady and the Tom system is that you have um, uh, daily tasks, um, you, you have um, on Mondays the living room, on Tuesdays the kitchen, I don't know which I just started last week but every day there is a part of your house getting some extra in attention and one day of the week you have a focus day and then you do the deep cleaning. Uh, so every seven or eight weeks they are coming around 30 minutes and then you do the deep cleaning and i thought okay let's try that <laughs> so uh, i am doing that right now and it really gives me um, a lot of fresh motivation but when i was cleaning i realized that um, uh, i do enjoy the process of cleaning and, and and i also realized that being a product cleaner was maybe not the most helpful decision to make because living in a small house with five people and a dog and being a product cleaner is not a good combination because what i clean in the morning is dirty in the evening and then i am actually happy because most of the time it's dirty within an hour again so it's really when you uh, have done the dust and it's looking as dusty as ever <laughs> two days later it's not why should you dust it doesn't work when i was cleaning my hallway i was scrubbing uh, all the mud from the wall and uh, our dog likes to shake herself out when we went to the woods and, and yeah it is okay i i don't want to live with my family in a house that can't be uh, dirty which is not allowed to be dirty of course when we are dirty we are wearing dirty shoes we put them off but we don't always put our shoes off it's okay the house is to be lived in um, so I, when i was cleaning the hallway i realized that also the process of cleaning was very nice uh, to do it was actually hard jumping every swipe of my uh, how do you call it? Every swipe of my, oh, I don't know how you call the little pieces of fabric you clean with, um, uh, was also swiping a little bit of dirt in my mind. <laughs> that sounds a bit ridiculous, maybe, but um, I. It was so refreshing. It was as if, as if I was cleaning myself, and and with every dust I swiped away, with every mud I cleaned, with every um, uh, clutter I removed, uh, uh, my energy g got higher and higher and I felt, re felt really refreshed and it was also a bit of a workout for my body and I thought okay maybe I can be a process cleaner and the process of cleaning will be hard jumping and I will have an extra hard jumping activity every day so that's really nice and fun so I will try that right now um, and I'm really looking forward to it. And it was also, the weekends are off. You have no extra cleaning. Of course, your daily routines you still have, but no extra cleaning. And I enjoyed a very relaxed weekend, which I really uh, uh, didn't have, have to do anything than knitting and visit some friends. And, and just, of course, the cooking and the daily tasks. But those are not annoying those are okay so it was really really nice um so i will keep on cleaning i don't know how long it will last maybe uh, most of the time it is for a while and then my motivation disappears maybe that will happen again now i don't hope so but we shall see and until then you see me cleaning every now and then on youtube if you don't like it don't watch it and if you uh, do like it and maybe you also feel that cleaning energy and you also want to clean do it because it's really good and i think it's also really good 
to alternate with your knitting. When I really have no motivation, I put my alarm clock on and I always start with 15 minutes of knitting and then 15 minutes of cleaning and then 15 minutes of knitting, cleaning, knitting, cleaning, knitting, cleaning. And then at the end of the day, my house is clean and my knitting has grown. So happy Sarah. <laughs> okay, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. I want to wish you a very good week with a lot of heart jumping moments. Remember, if you can't find them, create them. Uh, they are important to feel you as good as possible. And uh, thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.